Yo, welcome to the review of the Open Heavens Daily Devotional. Today, Wednesday, November 17, 2021. The topic we have to look at today says, Don't hate an abet sin. Don't hate an abet sin. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, we worship you. We are grateful for life and the privilege to study your word. Holy Spirit divine, we ask that you teach us yourself, even as we look into the notes of Pastor Enoch and the Jared way. We ask that you will transform us with your word, O oh Lord, and help us indeed to be as you want us to be, indeed, in Jesus' mighty and holy name we have prayed. Amen. You're welcome once again to the review of the Open Heavens Daily Devotional. And we're looking at the topic, do not aid an abet sin. Our Bible reading is taken from 2 Chronicles chapter 18. We'll be reading verse 28 to 34. 2 Chronicles 18, we'll be reading verse 28 to 34. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself, and I will go to the battle. But put thou on thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fighting not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore, he compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, Turn thy hand, that thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day. Albeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the even, and about the time of the sun going down, he died. Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus. Uh, Mary verse is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 22. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 22. It reads, Lay hands suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Lay hand not suddenly on no man, neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep yourself pure. You see, um, from the, starting from the Bible reading today, the story of Jehoshaphat and Heab. Quite an interesting story. You know, Jehoshaphat um, happened to be the king of Judah at this point, and he, he went over to see Heab. And from going over to see Heab, conversation ensued. This were some verses before where we started off our Bible reading. And the conversation and he said, let's come with me to battle. And we said, okay, let's go. And then uh, they said, but then let's inquire of the Lord and so on. And you know, some prophets came and said, uh, yes, you can go and you will win. And then they asked. And the Jewish apostle asked, is there any other person we can ask? And there's Micaiah who said, who is a prophet of God who would say the truth. And he said, eventually told him, you would you if you go to this battle you will be destroyed but Jehoshaphat and and um he have eventually decided to go against the counsel of the true prophet of God. I mean other prophets had been lying because they, they, there was a spirit that became a lying spirit on to them to make them lie to the king. Now where we're driving at is you know, Jehoshaphat had no business being with Hehab. He had no business being with Ahab, not to mention going to war with him. Ahab had been filled with all sorts of things that had been displeasing the Lord already. We, and, and we may be thinking, so why would Jehoshaphat just decide to go and keep company with Ahab? 
can we bring that question to ourselves as well? Might there be companies that we are keeping currently that may seem like that of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, and Israel, the king of Israel here, that would only lead to damnation? Now, you may not even be engaged physically with anyone that you shouldn't be, but I vowed virtually. Are there websites you go to? Are there accounts that you follow on social media that is that has become like an association between between Jehoshaphat and Ahab? Now this unholy association will only bring disgrace, disrepute, dishonor. It will bring sin. It will bring forth death at the end of the day if we are not careful and, and quick enough to desist from them. See. Uh, 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 Father the Lord right said that many Christians today are partaking in other people's sins without knowing knowing it, or maybe some even un- unknowingly. And you know, like in law, someone who aids and abets a crime is as guilty as a person who committed the crime. And that's exactly how it is, even before the Lord. If you are providing the environment for people to commit sin, then you as well part and parcel of that sin. If you're serving alcohol, alcoholic drinks to people and you yourself you refrain from drinking it, you are part of that of that sin because well, they are intoxicated and then they begin to commit all sorts of things that will displease the Lord, then it will be traced back to you as you have served it unto them. See Habakkuk 2.15 says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink and putteth like a bottle to him, and maketh him drunken also, that thou mayest look upon his nakedness. Because at the end of the day, no one who is indulging in alcohol will be disgraced, will be dishonored at the moment that they've indulged in it. So, uh, brethren, it's important that we take note that we do not support or enhance sin. The following accounts that uh, you know post sinful videos, sinful content, but yet you follow them. Yes, some of sometimes you like their content. What you are doing is you are aiding and abetting that sin. That's what you're doing, and uh, may we not reap the evil from other sins. I mean, we're not the ones essentially committing the sin, but because we are part and parcel of the the production of the sin, or we are healing it, then we take part of it like Joshua did. In short, God really indeed is merciful. Because at the point where the the captains of the enemies had come and they thought it was, it was Ahab, one would have thought God would have just let them kill him. But thankfully, God is a merciful God. And he cried to God for help. God caused them to leave him, to realize he's not the target, and they left him. But that may not be the case for everyone. You may not, what if he had not even seen them coming? I right about that. If he had not seen them coming, they would have just come straight and they would have killed him. And they would have died as, as you know, the king of, his, of um, Israel died. Meanwhile, he is the king of Ahab, he is the king of Judah, and he was not even meant to be at that battle at that point in time. We as children of God must cease being partakers of the sins of unbelievers so that we will not suffer their punishments. The uh, question is, are you aiding and abetting sin in any way? Repent today and prayerfully share the word of God that says, share what the word of God says about that sin with the person you already maybe aiding and abetting their sin so they can desist from it and God will help you to, to refrain your steps from supporting such and as you share the word of God with them, showing them why they should not be engaging in such, I pray that the Almighty God will touch their hearts and they would also refrain from such sins in Jesus name so that you will be blameless and if, if for some reason you are yet to give your life to Christ or you, you probably have before and then from aiding and abetting sin, you falling out of the path of righteousness. Why don't you come back to the Lord and say, "Please have mercy on me," like, like, the, like Joshaphat cried upon unto the Lord, cry unto Him and say, "Have mercy, forgive me, spare my life, save me, wash me with Your blood, Lord Jesus. I accept You and You as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life and let Your name be glorified in my life. In Jesus' name, we have prayed." Congratulations. 
If you have said that prayer, I can assure you that you've been welcome into the family of God. And from now onward, ensure that you are never part of other sins and you as well ensure that we live by the precept and the word of the Lord to ensure that the, we do not step into sin of any form. I pray the Lord will, will strengthen us and leave us with the action point that says examine your life carefully and repent from all actions and inactions that encourage other people to commit sin. Thank you for listening. God bless you.